Welcome to the show, High Performance by the Word. We're helping you create value. We're helping you becoming more relevant in your world. This is what this show is all about. We're looking at the elements of relevance, what makes you relevant, what improves your relevance, and why you have to improve your relevance. We're talking about value creation. And remember, we've looked at, we've looked at different aspects of value creation, how we can improve on our value delivery, because what stands you out in the world today is how much value you're generating, your competitive essence. And one of the uh, major aspects of value creation, or let me put it this way, one of the things that has really impacted the world today and has helped organizations, governments, individuals, groups, name it, create so much value is what we call technology. The technological revolution has impacted our world in such a drastic way. So what we'll be looking at on the show today, what we'll be talking about on the show today is technology. You will learn some very practical things on technology and how you too can take advantage of this critical tool in making relevant impact in the world. Stay tuned. Right after this break, you will be so, so impacted by all we'll be talking about. Welcome back. We're talking on technology, and uh, I have a very interesting personality on set today. She's a legal practitioner, a seasoned one at that. And she's going to be talking to us practically about technology, how she's used it, and how technology has also impacted the world around us, and why every one of us must take advantage of this tool called technology. Mrs. Rahila Silas, you're welcome to today's show. Thank you very much, Pastor, for this opportunity to be on set with you. Thank you very much. Okay. And together, we're going to guide our viewers mm -hmm. on the importance and the impact of technology and how you have decided to use it mm -hmm. even now to make impact. So let's write. What basically is technology? Speaking to the layman, what's technology? Thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity once again. Yes. Um, technologies are things created by man to make life easier and to solve problems. Um, we all know that human beings have basic needs, like, for example, water, the need for water, the need for food and shelter. And if we look through history, we'll see that um, people used to trek or walk long distance to get water. But um, human beings were able to solve this by um, bringing pipes, taps, and pumps to get the water to them at home instead wow. of them walking far distance. Wow. So that's technology. We have um, in history where um, we solved the problem of the walking long distance by manufacturing bicycles and cars and aeroplanes and trains. So technology basically is um, man-made creations, innovations by men to make life easier and to solve problems. Wow. So technology is not just computers. No, it's not. You know, for many, when, when, <laughs> when you talk technology, your mind goes to computers, yeah. cell phones, yes. and all of those things. Yes. So some of these uh, things you just spoke about, invention of bicycles, cars, yeah. these are all ways that technology has even improved yeah. our, lives. our lives. Wow. So that means um, technology is very, very important to human lives today. Yeah. So uh, um, I would just also like you to tell us some ways how people can um, deploy technologies to enhance their businesses. And um, someone who is probably, he feels that, well, um, I'm just selling uh, 
second-hand clothes or mm -hmm. you understand some menial business somewhere and it feels that um, technology does not relate to me it's just for you because what you're telling us now technology is relevant to everyone mm -hmm. so can you just tell us how important technology is to our lives regardless of the business you're doing regardless of whatever you're doing you must take advantage of technology thank you pastor yes um, basically, the wonderful thing about technology is that it has um, broken boundaries. We don't have borders anymore because of technology. You can sit down here and be communicating with somebody in the United Kingdom, in USA, in Asia, and that's the beautiful thing about technology. It's the same way with um, your business. Your business now has no boundary anymore. You can't say because you are in a particular locality that your business, your sphere of contact is um, limited to that locality. Now you can put your, your products online, just like Pastor said during the communion service. He mentioned that we should take our um, businesses to the next level. And how do you do that? It's by going online. You can take pictures of your business. You can write about your business. And anybody that is included in that application that you are using, that software that you are using gets to see what you are doing and you are opening up yourself for other people to take advantage of your, your business yes. and to patronize you as well. So that's the beautiful thing about technology. It breaks. There is no boundary anymore. There is no, you cannot say this is where Nigeria ends or where China begins. You can sit down in your home and you're talking to everyone all around the world because of technology. So. Um, like I remember there's a message that a pastor preached on the latent power of the human spirit. And in that um, uh, message, he spoke about a particular mechanic that only knew how to use citron cars, uh, service so citron cars. cars. <laughs> and he didn't learn any other, to service any other car like Toyota or Honda or anything, only citron cars. Now, Citron cars went out of market and nobody was buying Citron cars anymore. So he didn't have any business anymore because those that had Toyota wouldn't come to him. Yes. And the uh, pastor was talking of how he needed to find him. And when he went to where he was, they said he has gone to the village. And pastor had to go and look for him in the village. And he saw a man that was wealthy before now has gone into the dark. All because he didn't improve himself, he didn't improve his skills. He didn't prove anything. He just stuck with what he knew. It's the same thing with technology today. To upgrade our lives, we have to take advantage of technology for our business, our personal lives, to remain relevant. If we do not do that, um, we'll, it's like going back to the dark ages. Yes. Yes. yes wow. Thank you. You know, when you, you, you mentioned that now, I won't be talking about mechanics because um, for... Many mechanics I've come across, they, they just want to hold on to what they've always known to yes, do, yes. how they've always known to service vehicles. If you if you are an automobile mechanic, I would like you to listen to me now because this is it's just for you. You'll find out that they just think that one problem fits all, yes. not realizing that, um, uh, because I remember some years back, I went to a mechanic um, workshop, and um, the car was driving then had a fault, and all he did was to bring a particular tool, and he just plugged it somewhere in the engine, and from his computer screen, yes. read yeah. the, fault the, the fault of the car, and just went straight. Do you understand? Yes. And I discovered that uh, someone had introduced that particular mechanic to me. And I discovered that I didn't go back to my <laughs> former mechanic anymore. Yes, Every time I needed to visit a mechanic, all I needed to do was go to that guy who had this particular tool yes. of um, determining what the fault of the car is. Yes. You understand? So it, it's, you observe that technology is so relevant today in helping you generate maximum value. And Pastor Raila, we'll be going on break just about now, but remember there was some things you told me that you were doing right now in your field as a lawyer okay. using technology. Okay. So when we come back from the break, you will talk to our viewers 
about this. Do not turn that dial. We'll be right back. Many people long for success. They desire to do something with their lives, to make a difference in society, to become famous, or to become great. We all have the want to move from ordinary to extraordinary, to make the leap from good to great, to turn the seed of greatness that is in us into a fruitful field and to fulfill the call of God upon our lives. From Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakilomi comes this new and riveting book, The Power of Your Mind. Do you want to do something extraordinary with your life? See, God has given you an excellent tool to use in your journey of greatness. It is called your mind. Learn how to walk in divine excellence through the power of a renewed mind. Get your copy of The Power of Your Mind today. Welcome back. We're still talking about technology, and with me on set is um, uh, Mrs. Rahila Olu Silas. Uh, you know, you talked to me some time ago about how you are doing something with the legal profession in the state where you are in Nigeria. Yes. I'd like you to talk to our audience about how you're taking advantage of technology and um, introducing it to what you do as a lawyer back here in George Plateau State, Nigeria, where you reside. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Thank yeah. you. Um, in my practice as a lawyer, I actually, uh, earlier on, I, didn't, I wasn't really interested in it because I saw how the process was slow. I saw how um, you can hit a, a brick wall when you're just using the human factor. I am trained as a legislative drafter, and I know what it takes to draft laws. It takes hours, weeks, months, and after you draft the laws, there are still errors. You have to, even when it's passed by the House of Assembly, you will still find that there are mistakes in it, there are still errors, because we only take advantage of the human factor, and technology is not included. Then I. I decided that we've got to change this, and that's when my love for legal tech, that's legal technology, came, yes. came in. And I looked at how we can make the legal profession sweet, easier, and you know, and to solve the basic problems that we have. So I, this got me to get in touch with international organizations. Like I got in touch with the CEO of um, of um, Open Law. Um, library in Washington, USA, who agreed to come and um, give us a legislative drafting assistance, bringing grants to the states and help us to update our laws and help us to, you know, simplify the process. And that brought 
you know, a tick for us in the Ministry of Justice. Wow. It actually, you know, brought us to limelight, and um, I got involved also with why not have a hackathon? Hackathon is hacking up a system. So the legal system, to hack up the legal system, I found out about Global Legal Hackathon. And I contacted them and I said, I want to host it in just wow. Nigeria. And wow. we finished this some months ago. And um, wonderful just was the only city that hosted it in Nigeria. Wow. And we brought um, IT professionals, lawyers came, entrepreneur came, they all came to you know, sit down to form teams and lawyers came to present legal problems to them. And it was a wonderful thing because in three days, um, IT professionals came up with solutions to solve the legal problems. And although we had to just select a winner, that winner has passed through to the semifinals. And it was a wonderful thing seeing the technology ca that came out from that event. Now, the problem that was solved was access to justice. We have so we in the urban areas, uh, we use technology, but um, those in the rural areas, they don't have internet access. So this particular team was able to create a USSD application where without the internet, you can access it. You can call for help. Um, children, you find cases of children being molested, children being abused sexually, and they cannot report it because of fear. Yes. They can't report it. And most times when um, it's being reported. It's like after five years, maybe a child has been abused from seven years till when maybe the child is like 12, the um, people outside will get to know. And what is, um, it's not even the fact that somebody gets to know, it's the fact that the guardian of the child doesn't take action. Because if the person that molested the child is a relative, the person, they always beg. Yes. So what they do is to sign in the police station that um, we will not do it again. Yes. But I say, you're not helping that child. Yeah. So now this application empowers children to get to call for help from NGOs, wow. from lawyers, wow. from, you know, to come and um, for access to justice. Wow. So that's a beautiful application. Wow, wow. This, is, this is just so, just so sweet. Yes. Just so sweet. Like you said, you've made the legal profession so sweet. Yes, it's just too sweet. So that means, um, you know, I asked you a question. I said, can you just try to build something in our imaginations, like I was telling you? How would the world have been like if there was nothing like technology? Wow. It would have been like in the jet age. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the because, stone ages. Yes, the stone ages. Yes. Because when you look at how technology has evolved, yes. you look at from the manual cars to the auto cars. Now, they are not manufacturing manual cars anymore. It's now self-driven cars. Yes. And we now see that from the comfort of your home, you can pay bills. From the comfort of your home, you can do so many things with technology. We have artificial intelligence. We have robots um, giving judgment in courts. We have, um, although we still have countries like our jurisdiction where our judges write, but in most jurisdictions, they have solved that by um, taking advantage of technology for recording of courts, process, um, and everything. But um, if there was no technology, I wonder how far where we'll be now. Because now we have Internet of Things. You can be sitting in your house. With, now everybody's building smart houses. Yes. Yes, where you just come home and the Wi-Fi comes on and you are able to just connect. You can talk to you. You can just speak and, you know, and things just respond to you. <laughs> we have um, robotics now. We have robotics um, being taken advantage in the hospitals. Yes, they, con they conduct surgeries and all that. And that's why it's very important because our educational system needs to adopt it. If we do not adopt um, technology, many of the students that are in schools, we find out that when they graduate, 
they will be irrelevant. That's true. Because most of the courses are not relevant to today. That's true. They are not relevant to today. So we have to change the way we teach in the schools. Yeah. Even the lawyers, the way we deliver legal services is no more like before. Yeah. Now we take advantage of technology. So in the law schools, we have to adopt that. We ha there have to be courses of law and technology in Nigeria and every other profession. Well, I know when you, when you, you said the, in our schools, we need to adopt um, stuff like this. If not, you go extinct and you will not have jobs to do. And so, you know, it reminded me of something our man of God said some time ago regarding those filling station attendants. Yes. You know, in some countries, you don't need a filling mm -hmm. station attendant. You just go dispense fuel yourself and, and stuff like that because of the kind of um, dispensers they have. And Pastor says, when that begins to thrive in Nigeria, if you don't have any other thing to do, then yes. you, you, you get stranded. Yes, and you know we even talked about online courses, yes. how now a lot of people have been able to go back to school because uh, they don't need to enter into a classroom right where you are. You can take courses, even learn specialties, mm -hmm. tailoring and all of those things online and online. so on. So it's just so beautiful. And especially like what we see on this show, the Christian has the advantage, especially for the gospel. Yes. Technology has really helped the gospel. Say something about Just like how, our yes. Is, uh, yes, our ministry is, maybe, uh, maybe our ministry has inspired me, actually, yes. because pastor actually takes advantage of technology. So we're unable to be stopped. Yes. You know, before um, a particular legislation comes to stop, we have moved ahead. Yes. So pastor from the one-on-one -on -one evangelism, we went on TV, yes. then we are now on the internet, we are, we are everywhere. 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 We, you, um, there was a time we were only on local TVs, but now we are, we are everywhere. Just everywhere. 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 Impacting the yes. globe and, and fulfilling Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall, shall be preached, preached all around, around the world. world and then shall the end come. come. Because I do not see how else that scripture would have been fulfilled. Yes. I don't Without think by technology. picking megaphones and going from house to house, yes, or standing at market squares, yes, but technology. And you can take advantage of technology in all that you do. Yes, all that you do. Yes, that um, app you just talked about, the, is it the, what the, was developed for rural children. Yes. Now they can easily call for help. They can call for help. Yes, instead of waiting five years after yes. uh, the the crime has been committed. Yes, sir. It's just so wonderful. Yes, sir. I, I told you that so much Pastor Ayla has to talk to us about technology. And you've heard it all, how technology is moving the world forward and technology has moved us so much ahead making us add more value to the world today and becoming more relevant in the different things we do. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank, you so, Thank so you so, much. so much. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Pastor. Viewers, I believe you, you heard something beautiful. Take advantage of technology. It impacts every single thing on the face of the earth. There is nothing that technology has not impacted. Increase your value by taking advantage of technology. See you next time on this show, High Performance by the World. God bless you. Welcome to Performance Corner. Today we'll be looking at a combination of words which has been summed up to an acronym, VPO. It's what we call value proposition orientation. Value proposition orientation. Every organization must have its value proposition orientation. And this is something that everyone in the organization will need to know. What does this mean, your value proposition orientation? This is how, as an organization, you intend to engage your market, what you want to be known for. It is what everyone in the organization must know and be good at internally, because what you do internally impact your work externally. So we have several ways organizations engage their customers or engage the market. One of the ways is what we call speed to market. 
In other words, by coming up with constant innovations. It's usually run by a lot of technological-based companies. Apple, for example, that is their VPO, Value Proposition Orientation. For some other organizations, it's basically based on a customer orientation program. In other words, we want to engage effectively with the internal customer, we want to engage effectively with the external customer. Then there are some other organizations whose VPO is what we call the product leadership or service leadership. In other words, they have decided to engage the market with unique product features that enable the product stand out and it gives the product an edge. It's called product leadership or service leadership. You must have a VPO, whether as an individual running your own business or as an organization, and everyone in the organization will have an understanding of what our value proposition orientation is. I would like to leave you with this question. What is your VPO? What is the value proposition orientation for your organization? See you next time.